Hi, uh, my name is Asaf, I'm from Israel. For me, there was a little bit um, a moment of a shock after the film ended and I saw the credits rolled and one of the, maybe the first executive producer is Lars von Trier. And I heard him with my own ears saying very negative things about the Danish royal family. So the question is, how did that happen? <laughs> um, maybe to the producer and the director and uh, was he involved? What does he think of this movie? Should I start, Louise? Yeah. <laughs> I know for a fact, and Lars will back me on this, that he loves the film. Uh, I was very fortunate because he's seen a lot of my films and he, he, sometimes he doesn't like them, but this one he really liked. Maybe because he helped us work on the script. <laughs> it's a very good script. No, and uh, so he, he, uh, he was very happy with it and, and he was sort of a script consultant and uh, I asked him a lot of questions during the pre-production especially. I'm a big fan of his. As for the other part with the royal family, you can answer that, Louise. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, Lars makes a lot of movies about things you don't like. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. Enough said, so <laughs> you please. Um, hi, Thomas Appelshauser from Berlin. Question for Mats Mikkelsen. Um, what did it feel like to play a German in a Danish movie and um, what does it feel like coming to Berlin with it? Well, first of all, <clears throat> I'm really grateful that we can, we can come to Berlin. I think Berlin uh, has been a, a, a very important festival for Danish films during the last maybe 20 years. Uh, since Denmark was placed on the map, I think that, that, that the Berlinale has been a very, very strong uh, uh, beneficial for us. Uh, being a German in the film, I don't think I'm acting that German. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I mean, the, the, he's in, he is in, um, in a Danish province uh, and, and uh, and everybody was supposed to speak French or German or Latin in, in the courts, uh, so, but we ended up speaking Danish, all of us. Uh, so I did not actually, you know, uh, put my mind to being, I'm specifically German. I was just trying to be this guy who is uh, in love with the Enlightenment theory. And, and uh, so, so that was just not the character and the nationality was not a specific um, love story for me. But I love being German, though. <laughs> <laughs> we quote you, so... Uh, my name is Mahar Sagid, African Refugee News. Uh, the question goes to the director and one little question to, the, to Mike, Mikael. So uh, to the director, uh, I enjoyed the film because I learned a lot about the drafting of the civil rights in the Scandinavian uh, that was really put in a very, very good thing. Then you, I don't know, in Mars I saw a lot of Rasputin, how he worked with the Queen. Did you ever have an idea of taking also this from the Russian Revolution? And for the king, can you tell us how you prepared to this extraordinary... You were really great. I will just start very quickly by saying no, I, I wasn't uh, thinking about it, so that was very easy to answer. Oh, maybe it's good. Yes. It's me. Um, well, I read a lot of historical books um, and tried to study who the king was, and then I worked a lot with Nikolai, had a lot of talks with him about the character, and together we created this monster. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, there's no? Okay, then, you please. Hello, um, Davide Minotti from Italy. Um, got a question for the director. Don't you think that the character, right, the character of the, the king was uh, too dramatized. I mean, it was so, so very, very good, and congratulations about your job. I mean, Mr. Falscourt. Uh, but um, the the Danish history tells us of a, a weak king, not a crazy king. So it, it's more a question about about the script. You mean that uh, it's not historically correct, or um, it was too much dramatized? Yeah. Oh yes, I mean, uh, always dramatize. I mean, <laughs> I'm a storyteller. I'm not a dry, you know, documentarian, even though they're definitely not dry. <laughs> I mean, you, you said you have tried to be as faithful as possible to to history, and yes, I know I've studied Dan Danish history, and <laughs> the king was not so so crazy. But well, I, I know a little bit about him. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I know there have been many, many books written about him. 
and uh, some say that he was crazy, some say he was very uh, brilliant, intelligent, and you know, the modern theory right now in Denmark is that he was a bit manic depressive, uh, and that he had sort of a lot of mood changes, and we, we tried to, uh, to, to attain some of that. Thank you, there's a question on the right. Hudla Moritz, ZDF German Television, a question um, for the director. I was wondering whether you could elaborate a little bit on how um, Lars von, G von, von Trier helped you um, writing the script. I mean, which parts of the script do you, do you think um, do you owe to uh, Lars von Trier, or maybe which kind of, what type of advice did he give to you? Thank well, you. Well, uh, Lars did not, he was more of a script consultant in that he came in a couple of times and we talked about it, so he was not exactly writing it. But the main contribution I think he did was uh, at one point when me and Rasmus Heisterberg, who's my co-writer, we were talking about whether, on, whether we should follow uh, Caroline or we should follow Johan. And we had been very desperate and couldn't figure out the answer for this from, for several weeks, maybe months. And then Lars came in and we told him a problem and we said we're almost ready to give up writing this script. And then he said, that, well, just follow both of them. It doesn't matter. You can just you know, follow both of them. That's fine. And then we said, of course we can. And then we did that. Thank Simple, you. really. <laughs> Thank you. Are, you. are there any more questions? Was it waving? Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Alexandra Schüler from Big Stars Radio. This is for you, Miss Dearholm. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, um, we have seen you a lot of different roles where you all um, used to play very deep characters, and now you have um, a character that is a, a bit one-sided, and you don't have so much room to develop your character. So, what did you, uh, what did attract you to that character? Well, I've been longing for many, many years to play in a costume drama like this and <laughs> to wear big dresses and wigs. Uh, and uh, I also have been very... Um, well, I wanted to work with Nikolai and that was actually the best reason to say yes to this. And then the, the story is just a great story, so I want to, to be a part of that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. There's another question. Hello, my name is Daniel from Swedish Radio. Uh, I'm here. It doesn't matter that much, but a uh, question for Matt. Uh, Struency, what do you think about him now that you have played him? And what role and what position does he have in the Danish history? I mean, how is he considered in Denmark? Is he a hero? Or is he a, like a tragical figure? How, how, yeah. And then to the Swedes. I was really nervous about Swedes talking Danish. I know it's difficult, but you really delivered on that. H how did you do that, and how difficult was it really? Uh, well, uh, I think it's, it's been, um, he's been conceived in many different ways in Denmark. I mean, obviously, right after his death, Strunsu, uh, he was a bad guy. Uh, history was, was written by somebody who was not on his side, definitely. Uh, the later years, there's been a lot of books about this theme, and uh, and the love story has uh, has appealed to a lot of people, and 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 seen in the um, enlightening light. Uh, obviously, it, this is a good thing. So all of a sudden, he's a hero. Uh, in my eyes, he's an idealist. Uh, he's a man who can lean back and be idealist without being what we call a a man who wants to change the world. He can go on, you know, do his work as a doctor, but all of a sudden, he gets this chance. So, you know, climb the social ladder a little, and, and there he is. And uh, so why should people whisper the king in the ear if he has better things to whisper? And uh, so he's just one of many people who starts out like an idealist, and it takes over, and all of a sudden he's behaving like the people he was fighting before. And it's a very human development of the story. It's, it's what all good dictators do, and what all good idealists do. So I, I, th I see him as a, a very human character. His weaknesses are very clear. Uh, and, and I really like him for that. Um, and about the Danish, well, I, when I first uh, went to my first casting, I didn't understand Danish at all. And, um, well, I went to Denmark for two months, and I, I mean, I tried to convince the producers, Nikolai, that I could do this in two months, even though I had you know, it was such a difficulty to understand him actually when the day he gave me the part. 
Um, well, and I'm just glad. I, I just came back um, a couple of weeks ago when they finished the ADR and Nikolai turned to me and said they had looked again at the first audition when I had, you know, actually learned all the lines via an iPhone recorder. Um, and he said I had improved, so, well, that was a journey. Are you expecting an answer from me as well? No. Ah. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, well, I'm, I'm also Swedish, for those of you who didn't know that. And actually, there's one more Swede. He's down there. But I don't know if you noticed that, because he's so good in Danish, as I am. <laughs> so, well, I grew up in Denmark. I don't consider myself Swedish in this film. But maybe you did, though. I, I don't know. I, uh, did I come across as Swedish, Nikolai, to you? Yes, very much so. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I always thought I was bilingual. Uh, so, no, I don't know how to... I'm, that would be the, my life story then. To it. I mean, I, I grew up and lived all my life in Copenhagen and I, I act in Danish, I speak in Danish. A little story about how, how Struensö is perceived though. Uh, for anybody who chooses to go to Copenhagen, there are a couple of streets named after the, some of these guys. There is a Struensögade, and there is a Ransausgade, and there is a Gulbergsgade. And I would say, by far, the lousiest street is Struensögade. <laughs> <laughs> and the, be- the coolest street is Gulbergsgade. <laughs> My street. Uh, but I, I used to steal apples there. <laughs> yeah. you know, you used to steal I used to steal there. apples on your street. Ah, oh, right. Yeah. I used to walk my dog on yeah. your street. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any more questions? Yes, please. Uh, me again. Uh, I would like to know uh, from the producer... Uh, What's the size of this film in, Gen- in Denmark, and uh, what's the, the, the state of the market there uh, for movies like that? And the art house movies uh, like from Lars von Trier's? <clears throat> yeah, this is a huge movie for Denmark as well. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very big story about something historical, very important in Denmark. And I mean, it's difficult for a small country like Denmark with a, with a small language, I mean, to, to, to actually uh, produce these films. But I think that Danish film is ready for trying to, to, to make... Uh, movies like this, and we waited a long time for a film about Caroline Mathilde and Stronze. I mean, we tried to make this film for 40 years or something like that. Uh, a lot of filmmakers in Denmark tried to make this film for, for many, many years. And, and yeah, it's big, but I mean, now Danish, we, we are lucky because we, we, we have produced uh, also Lars von Trier's movie for many years, so we are really, really good in financing films all over Europe. And uh, I'm just very, very proud and lucky that we actually um, managed to, 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 to give Nikolai uh, the opportunity to, to make this movie because we are really, really proud of it. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we're running out of time, therefore I would like to thank you all for being here thank for your you so discussion. Thank you very much for this movie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.